this video I'm going to show you the charting space. When you pull down the slider and come into the charting space, what you're actually seeing is what we call the viewport. Okay, so the viewport is like a window uh, into the charting space. The charting space is a wide, a very big space that you can use to set up your charts. So you can put charts in all of this space. And as you see, you can navigate by right clicking and dragging with your mouse. You can also use the keyboard. You just need to press the shift key and use the arrows to move around. But this will allow you to move all across this very large space that you can use to set up all the charts that you may want. In order to move closer to any of these charts, you will use the wheel of your mouse to zoom into the charts. It's pretty much like Google Maps would work. So you click and drag and use the wheel of your mouse to zoom into the spots where you may be interested. Now when you go closer to one of these charts, you can see these boxes appearing in the top border on the right hand side border and the bottom border. These are the time scale, rate scale and time frame scale boxes. These uh, boxes show information that is relative to the position of the pointer of the mouse. So you're getting the exact date time at the pointer of the mouse, the exact rate at the pointer of the mouse, and this is uh, the time frame scale. That means that we are in the 24 hours chart. When you first load the system and you're using the default workspace, we have set all of these charts to be in the automatic mode on the time scale and on the rate scale. This is so that it's easier to find the information because otherwise the chart may be in a position where there is no data and then you wouldn't see the candles and that would be confusing. So in order to be able to use these charts, you have to remove the automatic setting in the scales. Uh, the reason is that if you try to pan the charts here, because the time scale is in automatic, it will not let you move the chart because it's showing by default the whole market from the beginning to the end of the market. That's what the automatic setting does uh, when the time scale is set to automatic on both ends of the market. So if you remove the automatic scale by using the shift key and scrolling the mouse pointer on top of the time scale box. Now you see that there is only one green triangle pointing to the left. Uh, what happens is that if I move the charts now, the left hand side of the scale is fixed, it's automatic, it's fixed at the date of the beginning of the market and I can move the rest of the data to the right that has the effect of decompressing the data and if I remove the automatic scale going with no arrows in the time scale box then I can pan and move the charts in whatever direction I want and you can actually affect the scale so you do that by simply scrolling the wheel of the mouse without the shift key so that you can get a view of the individual candles and the smaller period of time represented in the chart. You see now we're from 28th August 2018 to 14th November. The rate scale works similarly when it's in automatic mode on the top and bottom borders then Whatever you move the charts, the scale will be changed automatically to fit the chart. If you set it in automatic mode on the bottom only, then the chart will always be scaled so that the bottom, the lower prices are always included in the charts. And if you move to manual by removing the triangles, 
then there is no adjustment of the scale. You can move around the charts and you can affect the scale by scrolling your mouse directly on the scale box. The time frame scale box allows you to swiftly change time frames uh, and it works just the same as the rest of the scale boxes. You will scroll the wheel of your mouse and you will make the changes immediately. You will notice probably that when you go to sub hour time frames, your machine may have difficulties in rendering all the information brought to the chart. So what you have to do is reduce the density of the information going to a more reasonable time scale. And then you will be able to keep going up to the one minute time frame. One thing that you have to consider when you have a, a lot of information on the charts, let's say you are, for instance, in the one hour time frame and you are browsing lots of candles on the chart. Let's say like this. If in this situation you zoom out, you will notice that the chart changes the time frame automatically and it goes all the way to 24 hours. That is due to a safety mechanism that we have implemented. Your hardware will not be able to render all the information coming from all of the charts at the same time. If you have a, an important density of information in one of the charts or in all of the charts maybe, and then you zoom out, then you end up with an unmanageable amount of information on the screen and your computer will not be able to draw that in real time and it will probably get very slow. However, when you go back into the chart, then you will find the chart in the same time frame that you left it. So, if you want to have a dashboard, let's say, with charts in different time frames, what you have to do is you have to reduce the information density. So if you want to work with the one hour chart here, then you have to affect the scale up to a point where there are less than 500 candles in display. At that point, when you zoom out, the time frame will be respected and it will not change to 24 hours. As you see, the time frame remains the same even when you zoom out. When you are zoomed in a chart and you slide your mouse pointer on the top of the screen, you will uncover these layer managers that are hiding by default. Layer managers provide indicators, basically, or any sorts of studies that you can program in the system and make them available to be used on the charts uh, with the corresponding plotters. These panels hide automatically if you're not using them. And when you're using them, you can also roll them up or down simply by scrolling the wheel of the mouse on the label box of the panel. See the ones on the right just went to hide again. I can discover them simply by sliding the mouse on top of the label box. To use the indicators, all you have to do is simply click on any of them. This is the Bollinger Bands. When the indicator is loaded, you can see a green dotted line here. Some indicators come with a layer panel. You can move it to the other side of the screen if you want with a left click of the mouse and it shows the information of the current candle. These panels can be turned on and off with this orange button here. What we have been reviewing up until now is what we call a time machine with a single timeline chart. The concept of a time machine is very interesting because it's what allows you to set up more than one chart that is synchronized in the time dimension. The charts that are represented by these rectangles are not actually charts, those are time machines. So each time machine has a time scale. 
that is what makes it a time machine. When you put more than one timeline chart inside the same time machine, then those charts will be synchronized in time. And this is one of the examples that we have. It's the Bitcoin Tether and the Ether Tether markets, both put on the same chart. Because these two charts are within one single time machine, then they are synchronized in time. And the way this works is that the Ether chart has its own rate scale, which is represented by this box here. The rate scale on the far right hand side is the rate scale of the whole time machine. The same goes for the time frame scale here, is the time frame scale for the whole time machine. But in this particular configuration, we have set these two charts, Bitcoin and Ether, uh, in which Bitcoin has a scale. If I change the scale, you see the Bitcoin scale changes. And if I change the Ether scale, it changes below. Now you can see which market is leading, which market is following. In this all-time high period, Bitcoin was leading. Then when the correction started, Ether kept going up for a while, all the way until January 15th, and only then it started following Bitcoin. This is just an example. You can also have charts in which you have the same market, but different time frames. These are two Bitcoin charts. The charts are synchronized in time. So no matter how you move the charts, they will not lose the synchronicity in terms of time. In this last demo chart, we have combined data from two different exchanges. This is Binance and Bitfinex, the same Bitcoin market. As you can see, Binance has a longer history. It starts in September 2017 and Bitfinex gives us the history starting only on March 11, 2019. Here you can do the same kind of comparison. You can see which exchange is leading 